Welcome to Weld.com. Today I have my son, John Michael. Uh, we're gonna do some stick welding procedures. We started out, what did we do first off? Ran a bunch of beads with different, oh, yeah. the flat plate. We're blending them all together. It's like we start anybody out on any process. First thing we do. what do you do after that? Uh, ran into uphill, downhill. Uphill, downhill, 60, 10, 60, 11. Uh, 6013 fillet welds and just a bunch of stuff. Now we're turning you loose on a groove weld. A little different, huh? Mm -hmm. We're trying to create 100% root fusion and I think when I worked with you the other day we were having some issues of starts and stops and getting them blended together. Yes, sir. And that was one of the questions a viewer had commented on having trouble with starts and stops. We're going to do this in downhill with John Mockey. What's your name again? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding you, man. We're going to do this with John Michael uh, downhill, and we're going to do it with another student uphill. And I think we want to do, um, we'll probably just do the roots with you. You got to go do some Army stuff today, huh? Some training. Yes, sir. Woo. Appreciate your service, sir. I'm kind of proud of you, you know. <laughs> so we'll do the 7018 also starts and stops on the face of a weld as well with, uh, with the other student. So first thing we want to do, we, we've got 3 8 bevel plate. What do you want on here? Uh, 3 32 roof face. Okay. The uh, 3 32 or eighth inch gap. Okay. And you're going to be running 60 10 on your root face? Yes, or, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, for your root. We run 60 10, 70 10, 80 10. They all run pretty close to the same. Well, it looks like Yo already has these prepped for you. Yo. Yo, daddy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got you fixed up. So here's your gap. You want about like uh, about like that with 80 amps to start with. Yes, sir. All righty, get your hood on. We'll be right back. We're gonna get some clothes on. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna do a little downhill procedure, running off the uh, Esop Renegade. I had you set at 79, 80 amps, 6010 cycle. You've got your dig set about 70 percent, so it's gonna be pretty crispy art. You ready? Yes, sir. You nervous? No, sir. Huh? Look at me. You, you better not butcher this weld. Shut up. Shut up? Shut up. Come on, you don't talk to your teacher that way. Shut up. Everybody talks to me that way Shut in here. We have a good time in here, don't we? Yes, sir. We learn a lot, too. Yes, sir. All right, throw down. Let's go. Brace yourself on something. Stick in there tight. Feel that down in there? Yes, sir. Okay. You watch around your keyhole and you watch on top of your keyhole. Make sure it's filling up. All right, stop. To me, it looks like you know a lot of times these things will jump to the side. I'm gonna go clean this out just a little bit, buff you out, and we'll talk. We'll have you do some restarts. All right, here's what you got so far. Remember when I said it looked like we're jumping to one side? Yeah. Watch this. If I lay this down, what do you see? That shadow. Oh, we don't like shadows. That means internal undercut on the roots. You did that on piece pipe that and shot an extra of it. That would show up as internal undercut. And that looks kind of deep. That's why, you know, you always want to feel that rod on both sides to make sure that arc is not jumping back and forth, which it will. It's kind of weird. You can get by with it by running hot, fast, narrow gap, a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily work uphill. There's a lot of different little techniques. Okay, so here's what you've got so far. Now remember what this looks like. This right here is what everybody gets in trouble with. As you look over the top of this on the back side, what do you see? Kind of an angled hole. Yeah, it's like a depression angled hole. Okay, well, you don't see that on this side. What you see on this side is the very bottom of that. And so you got to remember that, you know, that void it's goes going back up. 
Yeah, that void goes back up here. So you got to fill that in and blend it in. The, the problem that I've seen over the years, a lot of people that are having trouble with starts and stops. And we did this one time when we repurposely failed a bend test. We did an incorrect start. You strike the rod and you come down here and you camp out on the keyhole and take off. You never filled the void on the back side. So you gotta, you gotta be aware that it's there. So what we need to do is this. We need to strike an arc up here, long arc it for just a second, let the rod and machine settle down a little bit, bring this down and just slowly come up to this edge here. Let it fill on the back side, reestablish your keyhole and then take off again. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Sure. Let's give it a go. You need to kind of prop your left hand against something to stay steady. There you go. Remember to point the rod slightly up here there, G. Hey, we got rod stubs. You know what we do with rod stubs? Tacking. Yeah, we burn these up. We tack up. Maybe we lack a little bit of hot pass or something in the groove or whatever, but if we're not going to use them, throw them at the cameraman. Chunk them. So it's fun. Strike up here. Yep. Long arc above, here. About a half inch above. Long hey, arc We're going to go back in and grind blend that out anyway. Okay. You, it's okay to make a bump up above. <clears throat> the, you know, the other thing I've seen people do is they strike an arc down here in their groove that and they're wanting jamming. to put a root in, and they're just throwing garbage in their groove, and you weld up to all that, and you're going, and you don't punch through on the back side. Get them in there. Make sure it's on both sides. When you were running this, you, I mean, you kind of felt, the, you felt like you reestablished the keyhole. And then we got down here, it looked to me like you were holding it out just a little bit too far where we're not directing the arc down in the stream here, but it also looked like it was jumping again. Now, up here it jumped to which side? Left side. Okay, and it kind of looked like it was doing it over here. And I realize we're trying to create a good angle for the camera guy, but, you know, you're right-handed, so which way is it easier for you to move? Turn your wrist to the left-hand side, mm -hmm. and so that's something to be aware of too. You got to you got to get this rod. You know, we're welding downhill. We want to go hot and fast. We want to point the rod slightly uphill, and I mean rake that baby in there good. So at this point, we want to go clean this out a little bit. Uh, I want to buff on the back side. I think we're a little thin is what it looked like out here, but I'll buff it off. Let me go clean you out. We'll run a quick hot pass and we'll end this video. Uh, man, you had a first go here, the half of it, first half of it before we stop, except for when the arc jumped. This would be your left side. This is it's coming toward me and that's where we had those two voids. Right here is where we talked about that depression or that little cup hole on the back side of the keyhole the part you can't see, right? So, when we move back into it, you reestablish the arc up here, and you move back into it, look right here. And you can kind of see two separate beads, right? Yes, sir. All right, so, what do you think happened here and here? And then, I think this is where I, I thought you were holding it back just a little bit too far. You know, the long arc in it a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so we've got, we're a little thin here. We need to keep that same pressure all the way down. So, I mean, you know, not a bad go. You've only been doing it, what, like third or fourth, five, fifth time or something? Yeah. We'll, we'll work on it. You know, the whole thing about running any of these root passes, and, and this preempts what we're going into in the next eight weeks, which is piping. You know, once you get comfortable and understand the fits, the relationship between root face, gap, amperage, rod pressure, and angle, and all that, Man, I mean, it, you know, it's like getting up on a water ski for the first time. We've never so, been water skiing together, have we? I've never been water skiing. Oh, I want to watch this. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun.
anyway, it, you know, once you get the hang of it, boom, it's it's there and it's like no big deal. And then you practice and practice till you get pretty good, and then you get all froggy and call the instructor out and say, "Come on, let's throw down." What do you think's gonna happen there? I'm gonna you win. Get, you gonna get smoked or I'm you gonna win? I'm gonna beat him. You might want to run a few rods before you call me out. <laughs> yes, sir. <you> know? <laughs> I might be getting old, but I'm I'm feeling kind of froggy. <laughs> All right, I hope this helps. We're going to work on a lot of this stuff. We've got some viewers that are commenting and asking a lot of questions on restarts, roots, and all that. So we're going to keep mocking a bunch of this stuff, kind of stuff up and practicing. Appreciate you watching Weld.com. Please subscribe to the videos. Thank you. Give it a go, man. You'd be all right. Yeah, all right. Gotta work on my accent. <laughs> you, you kind of surpassed me on the golf course a little bit there. Just a wee You're kind bit. Of blowing some, blowing some drives right by me now. <laughs> but I'm still playing you. I'm still scoring, right? Yeah. With your irons. With my irons and my putting, I can't blow them down there 320 yards like you. You know, you're hitting a lob wedge from 100 yards, and I'm hitting a <laughs> nine iron from 140. <laughs> <laughs> I see you laughing over there while you're waiting on me. <laughs> it ain't funny. Get you laughing out of the way. <laughs>